Welcome to your deep dive. We're going to dig into something kind of mind-bending today. Cyborgs. And I got to say, when I hear cyborg, I instantly picture, you know, like a movie character with glowing robotic eyes and maybe a bionic arm or something. Yeah, totally. The classic Hollywood cyborg. Right. But the stuff you sent over, especially this Andy Maya's work, it's like he's saying, hold on, our idea of a cyborg needs a serious update. He's suggesting it's way more than just, like, how many machine parts you've got. Definitely. Maya's arguing that the lines are already super blurry between us and technology, even on, like, the most basic levels. We're merging, basically. So wait, are you saying my smartphone is turning me into a cyborg? Well, in a way, kinda. Maya uses this term, cDNA, which he says stands for cyborg DNA. It's like technology, especially the really tiny stuff, is becoming so, so intertwined with us that it's almost like... A new kind of DNA, shaping who we are and how we function and all that. cDNA, okay, I'll admit, it sounds a little sci-fi, but also super interesting. Mm. Can you give me an example? Like, what does this cyborg DNA actually look like in real life? Okay, imagine something like gene editing. That's where we can actually change our DNA, maybe get rid of diseases, or even enhance our abilities, right? Mia says that kind of thing. Where we're messing with our actual biological code, that's a prime example of cDNA in action. Okay, I think I see what you mean. It's not just strapping on a gadget anymore. It's like technology is becoming part of our, like, our core makeup. Exactly. And that's where his argument gets even more interesting. He actually compares the way cDNA spreads and copies itself to how real DNA replicates. Wait, hold up. How does that even work? Are you picturing tiny robots invading my cells or something? Not robots exactly, but you're on the right track with the whole tiny thing, big impact idea. Think about it. A tiny bit of DNA can like insert itself into these bigger strands, and then it just copies itself over and over. Eventually, it can change the whole organism. Mia's saying that technology, the nano stuff especially, it's becoming part of us in this crazy powerful way, fundamentally changing what we are at our core. Whoa, that's a pretty intense comparison. So instead of thinking of humans and tech as separate things, Mia's saying we gotta start seeing them as like this blended thing, almost like a new hybrid life form. Right on. And that, my friend, is where things get really complex ethically, philosophically, the whole shebang. Because if we accept that this is the road we're on, well, then we've got some really big, really deep questions to ask about what it even means to be human in, like, the 21st century, you know? And I'm guessing those are the questions that Andy Maya wants us to grapple with. You got, he doesn't necessarily have all the answers, but he definitely gives us a whole lot to think about. Okay, so we're becoming like these intertwined beings, mm. right? Technology woven right into us. It's a lot to take in. But what does it actually mean for us, practically, oh. like in our daily lives? How does this play out? That's the million dollar question, right? And Mia's point is, that's exactly what we need to be talking about. We can't just sit back and let these changes happen to us, you know? We gotta figure out what kind of cyborg future we actually wanna live in. So it's not about if it's happening, it's about how we deal with it, how we shape it. Exactly. He uses this phrase, uh, cyborg rights, to kind of get this point across. See, as technology becomes more and more a part of our bodies and our minds, it's going to challenge everything we thought we knew about, like rights and freedoms and all that. Cyborg rights. Okay, you have to break that down for me. What does that even mean? Okay, well, think about it. What if, like, someone invents this brain implant, right? And it makes you way smarter, like, dramatically improves your brain power. So does everyone have a right to that? What if it gives some people an unfair advantage at work, at school? It gets complicated fast. Whoa. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's like yeah. a whole new level of inequality. Right. Or what about privacy? If we have these devices inside our bodies, who gets to see that data? These are the kinds of things me is getting at with this whole cyborg rights idea. It's a lot to process, you know? It makes you wonder if our laws, like even our morals and ethics, are equipped to deal with this stuff. And that is exactly his point. He's not saying he's got all the answers, but he wants us to start thinking about these tough questions now, before it's too late, before these technologies are so normal that we're stuck reacting instead of planning. So he's basically issuing a challenge, like a call to action, right? But where do we even start? This feels way bigger than just one person, one group, you know? It's definitely daunting, but Mia thinks we need to start by like, rethinking our assumptions like what does it even mean to be human for example he asks is a good life all about trying to live forever using technology immortality come on is that even realistic that's part of the conversation too mia wants us to consider it all even the stuff that feels like science fiction 
because what seems impossible now might be our reality sooner than we think. So, okay, we need to be ready for a future where things like living forever, having enhanced abilities, maybe even being constantly connected are all real possibilities. Mm. What else should we be thinking about as we like step into this unknown territory? So like if we can actually live forever, have these superpowers, where does that leave being human? You know, yeah. it's exciting, but also, I don't know, kind of makes you think twice. Yeah, no doubt. It's a lot. But me is saying instead of being scared, we should look at this as a chance to like redefine what it means to be human in this day and age. He even throws out this term transhuman. Maybe that's more accurate, you know, transhuman. I like yeah. that. It's like. We're going beyond our old limits, but we're not forgetting where we came from either. Yeah, exactly. And that's important, right? Because the more we blend with tech, the more we got to hold on to the things that make us us, the human stuff. And what would those be? What parts of ourselves do we really need to protect as we go further down this road? You know, with all this amazing technology happening. That is the question, right? And honestly, Mia doesn't give us a simple answer, but he seems to think that things like Empathy, you know, being able to understand each other, compassion, creativity, and love, those are all key parts of being human. Those are some pretty big important things. Do you really think they're at risk of just disappearing in this cyborg future? It's something to think about for sure. What if we get so used to tech doing our thinking for us, feeling for us, even making our choices? What happens to those natural abilities then? Do we lose them? Do we have to like work extra hard to keep them alive? These are the questions Mia wants us asking. It's almost like we're in this new era of discovery, but instead of finding new lands, it's like we're rediscovering ourselves. And maybe, just maybe, we're figuring out what it means to be human all over again. That's a great way to put it. And I think that's a good place to leave this deep dive. You know, we're at this crossroads. The decisions we make about technology, they're gonna echo for a long, long time. It's a big deal. So as we take all this in, this whole cyborg future thing, we got to ask the important questions, right? What kind of world are we trying to build? What matters most? And how do we make sure that tech is working for us, not the other way around? Big questions for sure. And for everyone listening, you know, take some time to really sit with this stuff. Because what it means to be human or maybe transhuman, well, we're figuring it out right now in this moment. 